There's a part of Israeli history that really doesn't get enough attention. People talk about the history of Zionism all the time, but when they do, they're often talking about what is essentially a group of founding fathers, famous men like Theodore Herzl, Zev Jabotinsky, and Leon Pinsker. But they're missing out on some of the most amazing stories of passion and dedication, because women have played and continue to play a crucial role in the Zionist movement, and what many of them have accomplished is nothing short of incredible. These are just some of those stories, starting from the earliest days of the modern Zionist movement. Chemda ben Yehuda, her husband Eliezer ben Yehuda, took ancient Hebrew and turned it into the living language spoken in Israel today. But he didn't do this all by himself. 19 years old and newly married to Eliezer, Chemda barely spoke a word of Hebrew when she left cosmopolitan Moscow in 1892 to live with her new husband in then desolate Palestine. Within six months, she had learned the language and she became the first mom to raise a family solely in Hebrew in over 2,000 years. Chemda was instrumental in managing Eliezer's key creation, the first modern Hebrew dictionary, seven volumes that she worked on for 30 years after his death. An accomplished writer in her own right, over her lifetime, she published nine books, novels, memoirs, and collections of short stories, all in Hebrew. Her slogan was, if we have a language, we shall become a nation. So yeah, Eliezer was no slouch, but it was actually Chemda who made it all happen. Rachel Yanit Ben Zvi, born Golda Lashansky in 1886, she grew up in a Ukrainian shtetl, always fearing the next pogrom and listening to her grandmother's stories about Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel. At 19, she represented her shtetl to the 1905 Zionist Congress in Switzerland, and at age 21, she emigrated to Palestine. She quickly became one of the leading women activists in the Yishuv, that growing Jewish community in Palestine, and was part of the founding and a leading member of two Jewish defense organizations, the Haganah and Hashomer, that later became the Israeli army. After World War I, she started an educational farm which focused on training women in agriculture. She helped organize the Women's League of Palestine to raise money for Jewish housing and urban development. Prolific writer, she authored 10 books, edited six others, and published over 500 articles. She believed in equal pay for equal work, that talented women should demand equal opportunities, and that they too could rise to great achievement. And when her husband, Yitzhak Ben Svi, became the second president of the State of Israel, she was a key figure in the 1950s decision to recruit women into the Israeli Defense Forces. For her work, she received prizes and recognition, among them the Henrietta Zold Prize. Which brings us to Henrietta Zold. Henrietta Zold was the founder of Hadassah, the Women's Zionist Organization of America, which promotes women's rights and Zionism in the US and which underwrites the world-renowned Hadassah Medical Organization in Israel. Born in Baltimore in 1860, Henrietta was the eldest of eight daughters of a Hungarian immigrant rabbi. At age 33, she became the first chief editor of the Jewish Publication Society and the only woman on the staff. She was almost 50 when she visited Palestine for the first time in 1909. What she saw there was squalor, illness, and high infant mortality rates. So she raised money and hired two American nurses to go take care of mothers and their infants in Palestine. Within three years, she had founded the Hadassah Medical Organization and in 1918, sent in a medical unit of doctors, nurses, and dentists. And in this way, brought American medical practices to Palestine for the very first time. Today, the Hadassah Medical Organization has evolved into two world-class Jerusalem-based research hospitals, providing care to anyone who needs it, regardless of religion or nationality. Chana Senesh, one of modern Judaism's greatest poets. She emigrated from Hungary to the relative safety of Palestine in 1939. There, she joined the Haganah, and in 1943, she enlisted in British Special Operations to be trained as a paratrooper. In a secret mission, she dropped into Yugoslavia in the hopes of helping the Jews of Hungary. Learning that Hungary had just been conquered by the Nazis, her co-conspirators decided it was too late and opted out of the mission. But she pushed forward. She was arrested at the Hungarian border, interrogated, beaten, and in November of 1944, she was executed by firing squad. It's a tragic and terrifying story. But the poetry of Hanna Senesh lives on, 
profound and deeply compelling, it is now essentially part of Jewish poetic canon. Set to music, it is sung in Jewish households around the world. Her life has been the subject of plays, documentaries, and films, and her story continues to touch people to this day. Rachel Katznelson Shazar. Born wealthy in Russia in 1885, she discovered socialist Zionism while being educated in Germany. In 1912, she moved to Palestine to be a teacher and worked to develop Israel's educational network. Her dream was to promote working women's participation in community life, to promote their education, and especially to provide them with a written platform of self-expression. That written platform featured the works of 57 women who arrived in Palestine between 1919 and 1923. That volume became the first authentic expression of the working woman's experience in pre-state Israel. Following its success, Katzelson created a woman's magazine and remained in publication through the 1990s. And this is all before even mentioning that in 1963, when she was 78 years old, her husband, Zalman Shazar, was elected president of Israel. And she assisted her husband in his public obligations as he held that office for the next 10 years, but her focus and interest remained with the working women of the Yishuv and later of the state of Israel. Of course, Golda Meir. Golda's life story is the stuff of legend. In fact, you can check out our video dedicated entirely to her. Geula Cohen, this female Zionist, is also an ultra-nationalist who describes herself as a woman of violence. Prior to the establishment of the State of Israel, she was a member of the Stern Gang, an extremist Zionist organization that sought to drive the British out of Palestine using force. She was arrested in 1946 and sentenced to seven years in prison, but she escaped to freedom before serving even one. After the establishment of the state, she became a journalist and later a member of Knesset in the Likud, Menachem Begin's party. She vehemently opposed the land for peace formula in the 1979 deal between Israel and Egypt, and soon after broke off to form her own pro-settlement Tichyeh party, which she represented as a member of Knesset until it dissolved in 1982. In 2003, she was awarded the Israel Prize for achievements and special contributions to the State of Israel. Ruth Gavison, one of the great jurists of the State of Israel, Gavison's writings focus on the subjects of ethnic conflict, the protection of minorities, and on the complications of Israel being both a Jewish state and a democracy. She's a founding member of Israel's Association for Civil Rights and is an important figure in Israel's human rights and democracy movements. She has also been a member of the International Commission of Jurists, an NGO that develops human rights standards through law. As a high-ranking member of the Israeli Democracy Institute, she addresses her writing to the three main rifts in Israel, secular versus religious, rich versus poor, and Jew versus Arab. She continues to win awards for her work on tolerance between the many cultures, peoples, and ethnicities that live in Israel today. Nechama Leibowitz. Born in Riga, Latvia in 1905, Nahama Leibowitz grew up in a home rich with Jewish culture and was given a religious education equal to that of her brothers. In 1930, she received her doctorate in biblical translation from a German university, and that same year, she emigrated to Palestine with her husband. Keen, warm, and humorous, Nahama, as she preferred to be called, rejected the new scientific approach to biblical analysis and was regarded as one of the great traditional Torah scholars of the Yeshuv, and later of the State of Israel. Famously, in 1942, she began exchanging summer worksheets, little bits of study that engaged all walks of Jewish life, first with her students, and then with the general Jewish public. This went on for 30 years, with correspondences running eventually into the thousands. Her writings, including material from these worksheets, can be found in libraries around the world. Ruth Calderon representing a new movement in Jewish theology, this feminist secularist, once member of Knesset, has created Alma. Based in Tel Aviv, Alma is a pluralistic secular yeshiva, cross-pollinating classic Jewish sources, such as Bible and Talmud, with literature, poetry, philosophy, and the arts. Alma's doors are open to people of any gender, religious or secular, who want to study Hebrew culture. Calderon, though, is most famous for her viral video, in her first address as a new member of Knesset, she is seen teaching a page of Talmud. Accounting for the video's popularity was not only that a woman taught Talmud from the podium of the Knesset to those male members who stayed to listen, but that she also declared herself a secularist 
before doing so. That speech was a plea for mutual respect and understanding between the many Jewish ideologies and communities that live within Israel. So there we have it, 10 female Zionists. For all of Israel's famous male founders, the women of Israel are central to the country's culture, morality, and politics. All the same, the struggle for women's recognition and equal rights continues in Israel even today. Now, this list is not exhaustive by any means, but it does provide a lens into the role women have played and continue to play in creating and maintaining the modern state of Israel. Thanks for watching.